Our Lent theme is again and again, and our symbol is the ampersand, or the and symbol. It's symbolic of God's holy and, and it's symbolic that there is more. The holy and reminds us that we are always more. There is always more to us. We are both broken and beautiful. Both joy and grief coexist together at the same time. Yes, there's historical systemic impression, and that continues to persist and exist. But God continuously guides us closer to liberation and wholeness. Like the disciples, though, we're often stuck in a pattern of messing up over and over again. We can feel trapped at times. We can feel trapped by shame, guilt, ignorance, and sometimes inaction. Jesus, though, freed us from all of this on the cross. And in humility, the Holy Spirit is able to transform us. Again and again, we are called by God to be reformed in God's image. This week's theme carries on from last week's, where we heard that again and again, God loves us first. This week we look at again and again, we are reformed by God. Jeremiah 33 Verses 31 to 34. The Lord said, The time will surely come when I will make a new agreement with the people of Israel and Judah. It will be different from the agreement I made with their ancestors when I led them out of Egypt. Although I was their God, they broke that agreement. Here is the new agreement that I, the Lord, will make with the people of Israel. I will write my laws on their hearts and minds I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they have to teach one another to obey me. I, the Lord, promise that all of them will obey me, ordinary people and rulers alike. I will forgive their sins and forget the evil things they have done. Again and again, we are reformed by God. We regularly say that we need to love God with all of our heart, soul and mind. In other words, it's not enough to just intellectually love God. We actually need to do something about it. We need to love God with all of who we are, with all that we do, as well as what we believe. And if we are to truly do this, then it's not a part-time thing to do this. It's actually something we need to become, to be. It needs to be us. God's thoughts and ways need to be part of us. But the bit that we sometimes forget is this. It's the bit that we heard last week. And that is that God first loves us. And that love from God is unconditional. We can at times get down and think, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. But the fact is, God loves us first. And this reminds us that we're okay, even in our failures. To love God with all of our heart, mind and soul isn't possible in our own strength. We need the love that God gives us, if we are to love God. Order is important. And the most important thing in the order isn't to love God. The most important thing is that God loves us unconditionally. Then we can put God in first place and love God. But the order is, God first loves us. In our reading from Jeremiah, God promises this. I will put my, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. Jeremiah was so many years before the time of Jesus. And we see in Jeremiah 
that God has always loved us. That's always been God's message to us. Love wasn't something that came with Jesus. Rather, God always has and always will love us. Just like last week we heard that God's love is unconditional, this week we hear that God's love isn't conditional, isn't conditional on our faithfulness to God. When God says, I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, that's straight after that God has acknowledged that the people have been unfaithful to God. Yet God says, I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts. There is this deep desire within God for us to return to God and to be faithful to our Creator. God's desire, as God says, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God's desire is for us to accept God's invitation. Earlier this week, in one of our devotional readings, we heard from Jeremiah chapter 18. The prophet there has been given a vision of God, of a potter who remakes us. When we become a wobbly pot, God puts us back on the potter's wheel and reforms us into a pot again. This is God's grace at work in us, reforming us when we need it. Again and again, we are reformed. And God can be active within our life if we choose to allow God to work. We have choices. Whether that choice is to approach the prophet and say, Lord, I've, I've got that wrong. Please remake me in your image. Or whether that choice is to allow God's ways to be written on our hearts so that we can more faithfully follow Jesus. When God says that his ways will be written on our hearts, that means that God's ways will be such a part of us that following them will be instinctive. It will simply be what we naturally do. We don't need to think about it. it will, our instinct will take over. We'll follow God's ways because God is such a big part of us. Following Jesus needs to become instinctive. And that's one of the Holy Spirit's roles at work in us, to help us live the way of Jesus so that we can live and act as God would have us live and act. And of course, this is a journey. Someday we'll get things right, and some days we will struggle. It is a journey. Good days, bad days, and in-between days. Our measure of success, I think, is whether or not our failures get further apart. In all of this, though, we need to remember that when we get it wrong, God still loves us first. Yes, we will fail, but we will also succeed. And when we fail, the prayer is this, Holy Spirit, please reform me. Write your laws on my heart. Reforming requires us to let go of the old so that new ways can emerge within us. Reforming requires us to let go of the old. And it's important to note here too that the things we let go of might not necessarily be wrong. They might just not be the thing for this season, for this period in time. Sometimes God calls us into a new season and we become transformed after God's heart for this new season. A good prayer here is, Lord Jesus, where is your heart in this season? And of course, transformation happens in us individually, and it also happens amongst our faith community. Transformation is both individual and collective, because God's working in a continuous and integrated way amongst us and the wider faith community. This Lent, may you let the Holy Spirit transform your heart after God's own heart. Amen.
and a blessing as we close. This Lent, may the Holy Spirit draw you closer to knowing Jesus, that you may follow him in a closer way, that you may walk where he calls you, and that you may experience the Father's unconditional love and grow in your faith. Amen.